Hey, thanks for stopping by Minnesota Black Robe Regiment channel. Make sure that you are subscribed and that you're hitting that bell notification icon down there. You're going to get all my content when it comes out. As always, comment, like, and share. Really like for my content to get out there and to be seen. Wouldn't do this if I didn't want it done. You know, what else can I say? So what are we going to talk about today in this particular video? Well, what we're going to be dealing with today is a topic of Koof jab passports. And why is that a topic for this channel? Because it talks about, it, it's got a lot to do with your individual rights. It's got a lot to do with individual freedoms and liberties and has a little bit to do with common sense. So what do I mean by that? We have in the United States today, just a little over 30 states that have required that HIV positive individuals disclose their HIV positive uh, status to their sexual partners or to people who they are going to be sharing needles with. There is a, a case out there about an individual who, whose girlfriend claimed that he did not disclose his status to her because she was jealous about something and reported it as a crime. He then ended up spending over eight years in prison and three years on pro probation, excuse me, parole. Now, am I okay with that? There's a moral side of me that wants to say he got what he got. Now, that's the moral side of me. And my morality, I can't, I can't separate my morality from who I am and from my commentary. But here's what I don't like. I don't like the idea of federal or state governments getting involved in who I have to tell I've been ex exposed to particular diseases and, and who I don't have to tell. And it's, it's, a, it's a difficult scenario ultimately for me because there is a very real moral implication to not disclosing your HIV status if you're positive to a sex partner or to somebody you're sharing a needle with. But the morality goes deeper than that. Where the morality goes is to why are we having unprotected sexual intercourse with numerous partners in the first place? I understand that we are a sexually liberated society and culture now, and that the, the Marxist attack on uh, Judeo-Christian values and the Marxist attack on, um, oh boy, I don't want to say this, traditional cultural norms, where it's one partner for your entire life because it's the right thing to do, has resulted in a whittling away of that so that now it's morally acceptable for people to have as many sexual partners as they want throughout the course of their life, maybe even throughout the course of a week and not have any compunctions, which is why laws like these disclosure laws about sexual partners and needle sharing partners have become a thing. But what we don't see is people defending this on the left. In fact, if you go to places like the M NPR and others, they tell these sob stories about these poor people who have just suffered at the hands of these laws and how they've been, been forced to, to change how they live. And, and, it, and it, it feels like violations of their privacy and it feels like a violation of their individual liberties and, and so on and so forth. Now, there again, there's 30 some states. So the majority of states that do have laws that require this. But does that make it right? Does that make it right? And, uh, and at the same time, a lot of the people who are decrying laws like HIV uh, positivity status disclosure are also demanding that every single person have uh, proof that they have received the COOF jab so that they can continue to do business. Now, here's where the corollary is, right? 
HIV is a deadlier disease than the COOF is. HIV is a death sentence for a lot of people. Not everyone. There are people who, have, because of different treatments, can live quite long lives. But it never goes away. And you can always transmit it to your partners via sexual intercourse, needle exchange, things like that. It never stops being an issue, ever. That being said, I don't believe that there should be laws regarding you having to tell someone that you have it. Because if we were living our lives the way we should, if this country was rooted still in, in the fundamental Judeo-Christian values of sexual um, monogamy, uh, one man, one woman in a marriage, in that union for life, uh, we wouldn't be having these concerns. So the, the issue is not whether or not a person is HIV positive and whether or not that disease can be passed on for the duration of your life. The issue is how do we change that? And we change that not by passing laws, but by getting back to a traditional moral value. And there again, even if you're not Judeo-Christian in your, in your perceptions, you cannot argue that the morality of one man, one woman for life forever is ideal. You can't argue that. It's ideal. It protects from so many things. It protects from HPV. It protects from other STIs. It protects from HIV. It protects from um, a plethora, a plethora of things. And therefore we wouldn't need laws if we weren't also at the same time whittling away by Marxist plan at what has made this, um, this American experiment so grand, which is traditional centralized family, mother, father, children, and then radiating out to grandparents and whatnot. That is what has driven this country and made it great in many respects is the, is the, the adherence to that Judeo-Christian value on family that doesn't mean there aren't other religions that don't acknowledge the greatness of family and the need for family. But the American experiment was Judeo-Christian in its roots. But could you imagine, and just, just imagine that you had to carry an HIV status indicator on your person at all times and had to show that to every single person that you met in a bar that you were in hopes of having a sexual relationship with. Imagine you're going into a club and the club decided that because that it was known for one night stand and hookups and all that, you had to, ex, you had to bring your HIV status card in to prove that if you ended up having sex with somebody in that club, you were safe. Imagine that people who refuse to carry that card were then made to wear some sort of, whether they were positive for HIV or not, were then made to wear some sort of, of armband that said that they refused to carry that card. Or they were threatened with isolation or they were threatened with segregation because of that. So not only is there already outrage in the United States by people on the left that that's have have insisted that it's unfair to require in those 30 states that do to require people to carry positive you know uh, uh, HIV uh, positivity not carry but to disclose their HIV positivity status to their sexual partners and their needle sharing partners these people are outraged that this is ruining people's lives that it's an unfair a uh, foray into um their privacy. These are the same people that are now demanding that people like me and others that I care deeply about be forced to carry Kufjab passports for a disease that doesn't last forever and isn't fatal for the most part. And, and 
in statistically, scientifically, COOF is not fatal. It's not fatal. Have some people died from the COOF? Absolutely. Absolutely. But is it pretty much a death sentence for everybody that gets it? No, it's not. But yet, the one disease that seems to afflict people with incredibly loose moral values and is permanent and can be passed on to multiple partners and from them to multiple partners, from them to multiple partners, and from them to multiple partners because of a lax moral code in the United States today, because it was whittled away by the very Marxists that are trying to implement a moral code about the COOF, is one that these same Marxists are now saying we shouldn't be enforcing on anybody because it's a violation of their privacy. It's a violation of their medical freedom. It's a violation of, of their, their, their right to live their life the way they want. Once again, those same people are trying to force those of us who have no desire and no plan to take the COOF jab to carry a vaccine passport, a jab passport, to be able to just buy groceries or go into any business. That's what they want. Sure, are there states fighting against this? Absolutely. Uh, Florida, for one, has said we will not have a COOF jab passport. I think Texas has talked about not allowing it either. But now imagine that they decide to do something with that at a federal level. Would you be all right with that? Leftist Marxist? Would you be okay if the federal government stepped in and said from now on, every single person that is HIV positive not only do they have to carry something showing that, and they have to present it to every single person that they might be interested in having sexual relationships with, but if they refuse, we're going to make them wear an armband. And if they refuse to wear the armband, then we're going to use, like the laws here in Minnesota say, that if you refuse certain types of medical treatment during a, uh, an emergency, they can isolate you. Would you be all right with the federal government doing that? Or is it just because it's easier to control the masses with a COOF jab passport than it would be with the other? And could it possibly be that the reason many Marxist leftists today are arguing against HIV positivity status uh, disclosure is because they don't care because it's a demonstration of the whittling away of the base of what make Amer made America so great at one time, which was the core family values that were built on the Judeo-Christian principles that gave rise to things like the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. So yes, it is leftists that are arguing against the HIV disclosure requirements, while at the same time arguing for mandatory COOF jab passports and restriction from being able to do commerce, which is the pursuit of life and liberty and happiness in the United States today. They're hypocrites, rank hypocrites. And if you're going to argue against HIV disclosure status requirements, or HIV uh, positivity status disclosure requirements, then you have got to take the right side and argue against COOF jab passports or segregation and isolation issues for those who refuse. And that's why I'm consistent. Not only do I think that COOF jab passports are a violation of my human liberty and my human dignity. But I also think that if we were a moral country, we wouldn't even have to be talking about whether or not it's right to require HIV positive people to disclose their status. And you could say what you want, but HIV is deadly 
and is spread predominantly through two incredibly immoral activities, unprotected sexual relations with people you should not be having sex with and the immoral usage of intravenous drugs between people. It's immoral. The coof is neither a moral or immoral result or a moral or immoral disease. And while HIV itself is not, doesn't have moral or immoral stamped on it, for the most part, 99.9% .9 of the cases, the way that you receive HIV is based on immoral activity, dangerous immoral activity. Not the same with the coof. There again, I don't support any law requiring any person have to disclose anything about their medical history. But I also do expect morality to take part or to take a part of how we live our lives. And the last thing we need are a bunch of despotic tyrants ruling over us, telling us how we will talk about these things and who we will talk about them to and how we will disclose them and how we can be required to disclose them, especially when it comes to a respiratory disease like the COOF that doesn't come close to being as fatal or as dangerous as HIV. Stay out of our lives, tyrants. Stay out of our lives, you despots. Let us live. Because if you can let immoral people do whatever they want, then you can allow moral people to make their own decisions as well. So until next time, Six Semper, Tyrannus.